Hi, welcome to the corner of Knit and Tea, episode 317. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog or blur at the corner of Knit and Tea.com, which is where this episode and every episode show notes will be. And I have an Etsy shop where I sell my hand spun yarns and knitting patterns. That is also called the corner of Knit and Tea. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, February 22nd. <laughs> and it is a lovely day here in the Midwest. If this is your first time visiting me, welcome. Grab a tasty beverage and some knitting or crocheting or spinning or whatever your favorite craft is and hang out for a bit. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. I do want to say thank you so much for your kind words on last week's video. I know it was a little long and um, a little disheartening. And then of course, um, things got put into perspective as they always do last week um, with the events in the southern United States. When I last podcasted, we hadn't had the worst of it yet. Um, and I have dear friends who spent last week without power and water in a survival mode, um, which immediately made my problems seem fairly trivial by comparison. So, um, you know, perspective is a good thing. Um, but I did want to say thank you, thank you so much for all of you who reached out and left messages or sent emails or um, instant messages through Ravelry or Instagram. I so much appreciate um, all of you checking in to make sure that I was okay. I am. I was just sort of in a bit of a funk. And I hope that to any of my viewers, if you are in particularly the southern United States, or I guess a little bit of everywhere, I hope the weather treated you okay last week and um, you made it through um, without too much trouble. Like I said, I know my friend in the south had a lot of trouble. Um, we still had very very cold temperatures for last week but as of the weekend and today we have warmed up. It has been above freezing for the last several days. Most of the snow is melted and today it is sunny. Tomorrow it is supposed to be almost 50 degrees which is um, not the end of the winter here in the Midwest. We will still have cold days. It is supposed to go back down into the 40s and 30s. Um, so it's not quite spring yet, but we are pleased that the um, long run of freezing temperatures has broken. And I am hoping that um, perhaps a little relief in the rest of the country will help everyone else too. I know for my friends in the Northeast um, and north of us, you got lots and lots and lots of snow and cold temperatures. And I do know that there were um, bits and pieces of power failures and other issues around the United States. So for this week, I hope that you are warm and safe and um, recovering from uh, the events of the last few weeks. And even when it seems the year can't throw more at us, it seems to. So let's try and revel in. I, I'm going to try and revel in a little bit of sunshine and warmer temperatures this week for myself um, in preparation of whatever the next onslaught may be. So I hope that you have had a good week. Um, things here have been okay. Like I said, the weather has been warming up. I found that my concentration is still a little bit um, lacking in terms of knitting. So I have one finished object to show you today and a few other things that I have sort of started. Um, I'm finding that my brain seems to work best with one project in front of me, which is different from normal. Um, and I have two things that I need to be working on right now. So I need to figure out how to kind of shoehorn another one in there. But I don't think I'm going to be working on tons of different projects for the next few weeks. Weeks, which is okay. Um, the fewer projects I work on, the more I get done on each of them, right? So um, nothing new or exciting to report, um, just kind of keeping on here. So today's tea is from Bird and Blend. It is called Toasted Apple and um, it is a Chinese green tea, apple pieces, and then a Japanese green tea with popped rice in it, toasted rice, um, which I have, I haven't tried this particular blend before, but I've tried the Japanese tea with the toasted rice before and it's quite good. It comes out a little bit um, nutty. Um, anyway, so this is from Bird and Blend, which you can get, um, they are out of the UK. So for um, those of us in the US, it's a little bit extra on shipping, but um, everything I've had from them so far has been delicious. Um, and I am drinking today in my tentacle mug. Um, 
and I will put a link in the show notes. It is my friend Julia from uh, Sweden, and I, for some reason, her um, Etsy shop name is um, is evading me right at this moment, but I will put a link in the show notes. She does do these fabulous tentacle mugs. Again, shipping is potentially a consideration if you live in the U.S. since she is in Sweden, and especially since um, mugs are delicate, but um, you can check out her shop. Ooh, that's really nice. It's kind of apple-y and nutty, and um, the green is very, very delicate. Um, I really like that. That's quite good. And I bet it would be really nice iced, too, in the spring and summer. Still drinking warm today. So let's talk about the knits. I finished a knit this week, and I believe I showed you this. I had just started last week. This is the Nova Cowl by Karina Spencer. It is a um, pattern that's available on Ravelry and on her website, and I actually bought a kit through my local yarn store. Um, Karina is actually local to us. She lives here in Kansas City. Not that I know her. I talk like I know her, but I don't know her. Um, she is a Kansas City designer, so that's kind of fun, and of course they did kits um, in the local Kansas City yarn shop. So the cowl is mosaic knit and I knit it in a variety of yarns from Hudson and Westco. It was their weld base, which is their fingering weight yarn. It is a um, sort of new, I believe they've been in business about a year, um, uh, American uh, run, American spun, American manufactured um, yarn uh, company. They are sourced in New Mexico and New York. Um, the yarn that I used is Weld, which is a woolen spun fingering weight. The skeins come in uh, 200 yard, 50 gram balls. It is a blend of U.S. Merino and Corydale. And um, I used three colors, and actually this is not one of the <laughs> that I used. Um, the kit came with four colors and as I talked about last week I wasn't sure that I liked the way the colors were coming together. I thought some of them were a little bit too close in terms of um, color uh, intensity um, because when you're doing color work even if it's just mosaic you want there to be some contrast between your colors. Anyway, let's get to the show. This is the finished cowl, and I really, really like it. Um, the colors that I got that were part of the kit in the Hudson & Co. Weld are um, charcoal, which is this really dark gray on top, jam, which is kind of this purpley burgundy color, and ash, which is this pale gray that you see in the middle. The green was something else from Stash. I don't have a tag or a label. I don't even know what it is. Um, it is definitely not woolen spun, um, but it was kind of rustically spun, and so um, it kind of matched the yarn in terms of not so much the um, woolen spun yarn was a little bit thick and thin, um, but it kind of matched in terms of weight and gauge, and so it worked in there really nicely and I had just enough left over to do the um, I-cord and tassel. So this is a big cowl um, and then because it is large it has an I-cord um, up at the top so that you could cinch it closed around your neck and tassel and the pattern calls for it to be done in this first color, color A, um, and I would have done it in that color, well I probably wouldn't have done it in that color to be quite honest, um, because it was so dark and I wanted something fun. So I probably would have done it in the light gray if um, I had not had enough of the green left over. I had just enough of the green. I only had a couple grams left over when I was done um, and so it was perfect and I think the green gives it that pop that I was looking for. Um, like I said there's not a lot of contrast particularly between this charcoal gray and the jam. I mean you can see it when you look at it in light you can see that the colors are different but for instance if I were to turn this into grayscale there's very little contrast between these two and there's very little contrast between these two. Again when you see the colors Obviously the green is really um, is really bright and kind of adds that acid pop into it, which I just absolutely love. Um, so the pattern was written by Karina Spencer. I knit it exactly as written except I might have gone down a needle size. I can't remember. Um, I might have gone down one needle size because I've been knitting pretty loose lately. I didn't care so much on this one because, of course, it is a cowl. And even if it's a little large because it has the, um, the casing for the um, drawstring, it's not a problem. Um, it took me most of the week to work through. There's about 500 yards of fingering weight in here, actually, so it um, it's deceptive. It does use, actually, quite a bit of yarn, um, and so I used all those colors, and I did kind of one chunk section a night, um, and then I did all the finishing work on Saturday. 
Saturday, Friday. I did all the finishing work on Friday. So, um, no, Saturday. I finished the top and did the um, I cord and the um, tassels, which were super fun. She's done a nice tutorial for tassels in there. Um, and that was super fun. That was the first time I'd ever made tassels. So that is my finished Nova cowl, again, patterned by Karina Spencer, knit basically um, per pattern, um, except and, and per kit, except that I added in one of my own colors. The color that I subbed out was actually, and oh, I'm not going to get into the plastic bag. It was actually, it's called Red Feather. It was kind of a um, terracotta orange orange colorway and I just thought it was too close um, to these colors. It probably would have gone in where the green would have gone in but I really like that pop. So that is my only finished object for this week. Um, I decided to bring Okay, technically, even though I said I only worked on one thing this week, I kind of worked on two because I have been working on a new charity blanket that I keep next to my computer. And that is what I work on on all my Zoom calls or anytime I have to sit through a webinar or anything where I can knit, um, but I don't want to pay too much attention to pattern. And for this one, I am knitting, um, I believe it's called the Waves Blanket. It actually is a pattern off the side of... Um, uh, <laughs> the Karen color cakes that I was using for my last knit. It is just a chevron pattern and um, I had found a couple chevron patterns on Ravelry and for some reason my brain was having problems with them um, knitting them correctly. I kept casting on the right number of stitches or what I thought was the right number of stitches and then I'd get to the end of the row and I'd be completely off. Um, so I started using this pattern that had been on kind of the ball of yarn. I just kind of clipped it. It's a two row repeat so it's really really easy and I am doing um, this blanket in pinks. This this is going to be a uh, donation, I believe, to Project Linus when I am done. I will let you know where they go eventually. Um, but I have been keeping this next to my computer and it is bright, bright, bright. The color, the yarn that I'm using is Stylecraft DK. I am using some of the leftovers from the blankets that I crocheted last year for my niece and nephew. Um, and then I am also, I had to buy a few other skeins to sort of round it out. Um, we joke in knitting that it's okay to buy yarn to complete a project, even if you're, it doesn't count as stash. So I had to buy a few balls to complete um, basically two blankets and this is the first of those blankets. So down at the bottom we have this completely crazy bright pink and then I have a slightly more relaxed pink. It still looks crazy pink but it looks a little better in the ball by itself. <laughs> this is fondant. And um, that's the one that I am doing next. I did do a little bit of overlap. I ended up doing a little bit more overlap than I intended to. I just started looking at the ball of the hot pink and was like, oh, that's running out. I should start working in the new color. And then it just kept going and going and going. But at this point, I am actually done with the hot pink. So I am basically a little more than a third of the way done with the blanket. And I am working on the next um, one now. I have three skeins and I'm hoping that this will be sizable enough to create at least a 30 by 30 blanket, which according to Project Linus is okay for preemie size. Um, and then if I get more out of it, great. If I need to, I will buy even more yarn to to finish this off because I do want this to be a blanket of um, enough size to be donated. Um, so I am going to keep working on that. But I just wanted to bring that because I've done about a third of the project. That's between um, 330 and 400 yards already in there. So I did want to um, bring that and show you. So that's kind of my off to the side project. I guess I'm still working on this as time permits because it, like I said it is just right next to my desk. It's something that I pick up and do a row or two here or there um, and it will steadily grow. So the next project that I cast on is actually the only other project currently on my needles. I need to add another sample. Um, I did some gauge swatching last week. I didn't get gauge. I threw up my hands in disgust and decided not to think about it. And now it is a new week, so it is time to think about it again. Um, but the other thing that I am working on is I agreed to do a test knit for Fena Goberstein. She is a designer on Ravelry and um, she does some work with our company and said she needed some test knitters and you know I occasionally drop in and do those things and so I am testing a mod brioche scarf for her and it is not a secret so I can share it um, and it is a pretty simple brioche scarf and what's mod about it is the way um, you're working your colors together. So um, it is a standard brioche scarf. It has, it's a four row, well it's technically a two row repeat but you knit each row twice so it's a four row repeat as is the case with brioche and all you're really doing is changing your colors a lot. So as you can see 
I am um, starting to work on it. I have never worked on a project where um, in the brioche, um, so there are a couple new things for me. I have never worked on a project in the brioche where you are going back and forth between your colors so that you are alternating between your um, dominant and your less dominant color. Usually in brioche, um, in two color brioche, one cut, one color, one side is one color dominant and the other side is the other color dominant. And so the interesting thing to me here is that you are playing with your color domination and actually switching it. I don't know why this is um, kind of on the needle, it is start looking like it's a ripple. It shouldn't be, although I suspect that maybe what is causing that is the fact that I am changing the which color is dominant. And so, um, if you've knit brioche before, you know that um, brioche is created by knitting and purling stitches and then slipping stitches with the yarn over. And when you are changing between sections, you are actually doing two of the similar things next to each other rather than keeping in pattern. I don't know if that's a great way to explain it. I want to explain it without giving away the pattern. <laughs> So that's, I'm going to stick with that. So that may be what is creating it almost a little bit of a rippled look, but it, it shouldn't be a rippled look. And I suspect when I block it, it's going to be fun. Um, then the other mod part is that you're using all kinds of different colors. So um, originally I had a different idea for this project than I ended up using. The project calls for DK weight yarn and um, she used uh, in the original design used Kenzie by Haiku um, and that is a it's a wool and um, I don't remember what's in it if it's a viscose or a bamboo it's it's a it's a wool and alpaca and something else so it is yarn with some drape so I went looking for DK weight yarns um, because I didn't have a ton of DK weight in my stash or so I thought. Um, and I decided that I thought what I would use is I would use um, Malabrigo um, Silky Merino, which is a DK. So um, that's Malabrigo and it's Silky Merino and it comes in skeins of 50 gram balls, 150 yards to the skein. It is 51% silk, 49% merino wool. Um, and it is lovely and drapey and um, I have worked with it once or twice before, but I always um, find an excuse to work with it if I can. Um, and so what I originally thought I would do is I would use this as my background color. This is um, Tatami, T-A, or Tatami, sorry, T-A-T-A-M-I, which is kind of a um, bamboo uh, brown color. It's just like a little bit of a kind of warm brown tone. Um, and then I decided to do a little bit of a gradient with three colorways in the pink and red zone. And so the colorways that I picked were, this one is Party Pink, this one is Pink Panther, and this one is Amoroso, which is actually a red, but um, it's a red, um, it's kind of, it's, I mean, technically, I don't know that it's really a variegated, but it's got some splotches of pink in it. So I thought that these three would work well together against the um, tatami as kind of a contrast. Um, however, when I started swatching, and of course because I am test knitting, I need to swatch for gauge, I did not get gauge, and um, then I wondered if the yarn that I had selected was too drapey, because um, the problem is that um, wool has um, a really nice uh, spring form and factor. Wool kind of stretches and then it also springs back to its original shape. So in some ways it holds its shape nicely and silk and other fibers that drape sometimes don't hold their shape as nicely. And so then I wondered if I had chosen something that was just too drapey and if I should try and use something that was more of a um, merino to kind of hold the form. So I went back and looked through my stash and what I did have in stash was I did have two skeins of um, my friend Treasure Goddess Yarns, that's Christine, she's in my knitting group, of her DK Treasures Yarn. So that is Treasure Goddess Yarns, um, she's available on Etsy and on her own website, and I had two skeins of her DK weight, which is 100 grams, 274 yards. Um, DK Sport weight, 100% Superwash Merino. And I had that in her um, darker kind of burgundy colorway called Song of the Sirens. And so then when I went back and looked at what I had, I thought, hmm, 
I have two skeins of this, which is um, more than enough to be the background color. So I thought maybe what I would do is I would do this as my um, consistent A color, the background color, and then use these as my three alternating colors to kind of get a little bit of a gradient look. And I think it's actually coming out really nicely. So far, um, so far, I, um, like I said, I've done these sections and on the camera, at least from where I'm sitting, it looks like it's a little hard to tell between the um, totemy and the, um, the uh, light pink that is the party pink. And then you can definitely see between the party pink and the pink panther, but I think it's gonna be really nice. And so the rest of this scarf is just gonna be more of this um, in a bunch of different um, combinations and permutations of the colors. Um, I believe the A color will always be there. So it will always be the A color with the other colors. Um, so I have lots of work to do on this. It is due by mid-March. Um, I am actually wondering if I really, really, really put my mind to it, if I can crank it out this week. Um, I think it would be a lovely birthday gift for my mother. However, her birthday is March 5th and today is February 22nd. So I have a lot of work to do if I want this to be a finished scarf for her <laughs> by her birthday. But I am wondering if I spend most of my time on this this week, if I can crank this one out and... Um, Give it to her. The other nice thing about the pattern is it can be either a scarf or a cowl. Um, the green at the bottom that you see is actually just waste yarn. Um, that is my provisional cast on so that I can join it for a three needle bind off at the end. Um, the pattern, as I said, is Maud Brioche. Uh, I can't remember whether it's cowl or scarf. Um, I will link it in the show notes. The pattern, um, the listing is already live on Ravelry. I don't think the pattern will be live until next month, um, but the um, listing is already there on Ravelry so that we can link our projects to it. And she is using that to um, distribute the pattern to us. And so um, there are a bunch of us test knitting it. And um, like I said, I'm hoping maybe I'll even be done next weekend if I work my butt off this week. So I have lots more to do, but that is the um, project in process. And I will say that I was pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, when I look at the picture of this I was like oh no that is gonna take me a lot of time and brain power that I do not have um, and if you have knit brioche before this is a pretty simple brioche project I mean I will say it's probably intermediate brioche uh, or it's probably intermediate knitting because if you have not done brioche before this is um, not this could be a beginner pattern, but there is a lot of color changing going on. Um, but the nice thing about it is that once you get it started, there's no increasing and decreasing because it's the same number of stitches all the way across. And so I will tell you that I pretty quickly fell into a rhythm with this one and did not need to look at the pattern. So um, that is what I'm working on this week. Hopefully, maybe I'll finish it. I can show it to you next Monday and then send it out in the mail right away to my mom. Um, and it'll probably be a couple days late, but hopefully she won't mind. Um, and she won't really use it in California at this point, um, but uh, she would love to go see her grandkids again when, um, when the pandemic is over and I'm sure she'll go to Chicago and be thankful for a cowl. So that is what I'm working on this week. Um, the final thing that I should cast on is I have a sample that I'm knitting for Zen Yarn Garden and um, I need to play a little bit more with Gage and get that cast on this week um, and kind of motor my way through that. It is a spring tea so I really need to get um, gear in gear on that because I know they would like to sell that this spring. So that is the status of knitting. Let me take a sip of tea. I'll show you a little spinning and then we'll be done for the day. So last week I showed you a braid from Fat Cat Knits. It was a panda. Um, well, the, co the colorway was flamingo and um, it was a braid that had um, a variety of materials in it. And actually when I talked to you, I didn't even realize exactly what materials it had in it. <laughs> So I knew that it was a braid that had wool and um, bamboo in it. And I showed you that the braid tends to look a little frosted um, when you work with <clears throat> bamboo. And so it creates a somewhat more muted um, palette. The braid was 33, 33, 26, and 8. Those are percentages. 33% superwash merino at the front end. Or it might not even be superwash, it's just merino. 33% bamboo. 26% 
uh, South African wool. So that is um, another wool blend. It's um, a blend of a variety of wools. There was no specifics about what was in there. And then the part that I didn't read in the listing when I ordered it was 8% rayon neps. And um, so as I started to spin, I was like, what are all these bumps in my fiber? And I was like, oh, that's the rayon neps. And so I realized that what I had ordered was a braid that was going to be more of a tweedy yarn. Now, normally when I spin, I tend to spin, um, I t tend to spin top and um, most of what I tend to spin does not have any neps or texture in it. So if I find any, I'm generally picking them out as I'm spinning. Um, the neps in this were intentional and intended to create some of those Tweety type yarns where you have little um, flecks of other colors in there. Um, I'm trying to think of some good examples. Um, Donegal Tweed is a great example because it always has little flecks of other things in there, but I'm thinking even on a more... Um, economic scale, nitpicks, city tweed, um, those yarns that um, are meant to have kind of a heathered look, but then also have some other little bits of fibers in there for texture. And sometimes when you're knitting with them, I know at least I am sort of um, tempted to pick them out because I mostly knit with smooth yarns, but they are actually meant to be there and in that texture. So this spin was an interesting experience for me because there was lots of texture in the fiber. And as you know, in general, I don't spin art bats or textured fibers that often. Um, so this is the finished product and it needs a good bath um, and so I can't tell you exactly how many yards it is. My guess it, it is it is going to be a um, sport or DK weight um, and it has all of those bright colors that were in there um, like a turquoise blue and a little bit of coral and pink and gray and as you can see it has been both softened by the bamboo which gives it kind of a frosted look and then you can see all those tweedy neppy bits in there. So it is a bit of a thick and thin and the plying is a little uneven, but it is a um, beautiful Tweedy yarn. And given the fibers in it, I think it would make great socks. It is nice and soft. Um, it just is not super wash merino. So it would have to be hand wash, um, but it also could be, um, it would make a great cowl or mitts, or it might even make a nice um, kerchief or chalette. Um, but again, it's not one of my um, finer spins um, or the most consistent spin because you've got all that neppy goodness in there. So um, that is what I spun this week and it needs a bath and a good thwacking and then I will take some nice photos and this one will go up in my Etsy shop. The dark blue that you see here is actually just the um, threads tying it together. So um, it really is just kind of um, that, that aqua turquoise with the pink and gray. So this week's braid is actually a repeat of some Hello Yarn that I have spun before. This is a, I believe it's a Falkland, but you know what? I didn't even look at the label. Um, I believe it's a Falkland and this is the colorway Troll, which is um, basically blues and greens, um, lots of swampy yellows, um, a little bit of um, mauve and purples, and then up black to the bluey greens and there's some mauve and purples and reds and some of blues. So it's a nice kind of muted rainbow and I am working on that. This is half the fiber. I have already spun up the other half the fiber and so I hope to have this to show you next week. Um, I think I'm probably going to spin this for maximum barber pole. Um, so pull it all into tiny strips and then spin it together and so it will just be some beautiful color. So that is what's going on in my neck of the woods. I hope that you are surviving the weather and everything this year has to throw at you. Um, we all said 2020 was an incredibly, incredibly hard year and 2021 seems to be starting off with a bang and not exactly the bang that we wanted. <laughs> So um, I hope that you are doing well, that you are finding solace in your crafting or reading or whatever it is that you can do to keep um, your mind active and busy. I do have some really good books that I've been reading and although I don't normally cover books in my podcast, um, next week I might talk about a couple of them. I have one that I'm um, close to finishing and I really really like it and it's been a completely distracting read, nothing I would normally pick up. Um, so I may talk about that a little bit next week. Until then, um, my best wishes to you. Thank you for visiting with me today and I will see you next time. So until we see each other again, I will say as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next week.
拜。